Hey, card makers, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap with the Western Card Kit Assembly Workshop. I hope you've by now gathered your instructions and I have my kit here. It's beautiful with all of its fun Western style ribbons. We even have a, a denim with a really pretty gold stitch in this kit. We've got some wonderful embellishments and some uh, hook and loop dots, which we'll learn more about later. And we also have these really fun um, leather-like tags that are gonna really blend in well with this collection, plus our paper. And of course, to get started, you'll also need a guillotine style trimmer and your accordion pocket file. If you're new around here and you have not yet made an accordion pocket file, I'm here to help you do that. I have a video and also a starter kit available um, at Club Scrap to help you create one of these organizers for yourself because it's a, it's a wonderful way to stay organized as we're making your cards. The first thing we're going to do is organize the papers according to which ones we're going to be trimming and in what order. So let's take our pile of paper and sort through it together. We're going to start out by trimming a gold plain and then also a burgundy. So just grab one of each of those and I'm going to pile this on my uh, trimmer base while I hold the rest of the papers in my arm. Next we're going to trim a blue plain followed by another burgundy and a print. So when I when I uh, lay this print down I'll lay it face down followed by one ivory plain, the other gold plain, then one more ivory and a brown and a print and then we're going to trim the two 12 by 12 sheets of cut aparts last. As we trim we'll file everything um, into one of three pockets for card set A, B, and C and if a piece isn't used we'll file it in pocket D for decorating potential. Now we've got our first diagram here in which we're going to trim paper to be used to make a folio and you'll, you'll learn more about that later. And the diagram indicates that the paper grain direction should dip easily top to bottom. So here to test your grain direction just always hold the paper by the edge, study how uh, flexible it is and then hold it by the other edge and one will definitely be far more stiff than the other. So this is the flexible side going into the trimmer flexing easily top to bottom. We'll cut at eight and a half, and then rotate and cut at ten and a half. This piece will be set aside to be scored, and then we have this longer, skinnier piece. We'll trim that horizontally at five and a half, and file this um, this strip in pocket A. And this little guy is a scrap, so I'll pop that in pocket D. Then I'll take the remaining three and a half by twelve, and we'll trim this horizontally at ten. I'll set aside this long piece for scoring and then file this in pocket A. Let's do the exact same thing with the burgundy. So making sure it dips easily top to bottom. We'll cut at eight and a half. Rotate, cut at ten and a half. Set this aside to be scored. Then grab this narrow strip, cut at five and a half. File that in pocket A. And we have a little scrap for pocket D for don't really know where I'm going to use that quite yet. <laughs> then cut this last piece horizontally at 10. This gets set aside to be scored and this is filed in pocket A. Now we move on to the blue plane. This one also should dip easily top to bottom when we put that in the trimmer. And we'll start out at eight and a quarter. And four and a half. We're going to rotate this four and a half by 12 and cut it at six. Set these pieces aside to be scored. Then the two remaining pieces that you have should be the same width. Let's trim them horizontally at 10 and 5. And we'll place the four same size panels in pocket A. And these are scraps to be used for later, possibly. Now, we can work with two at a time here. Let's take a burgundy, put it in, dipping easily top to bottom. And the same for the print. Okay, dipping easily top to bottom. We'll cut at eight and a half, and we're going to do both at the same time. Eight and a half, and rotate, and cut at 11, and then one more rotation. We'll cut at four and a quarter. These four pieces can be set aside for scoring. Then take this narrow strip, we'll cut horizontally, 
at six and a quarter. And since this strip is so narrow, I like to kind of bring it down a little bit to, so that the top edge of the paper lines up with the bottom edge of my inch mark line, six and a quarter. And then file this in pocket C. These are scraps. And you have this long skinny piece. We'll trim this horizontally at 10. Set aside to be scored and pocket A. All right, one ivory dipping easily top to bottom. One gold dipping easily top to bottom. And we'll trim both at the same time at nine inches. Now we're gonna rotate this piece and cut horizontally at 11 and three quarters. 10 and a half. And nine and a quarter. Now rotate this piece again, so now it's vertical. And we'll cut this nine, make sure the nine inch side is here, okay? Then we're gonna slide that down and cut it four and a half. Set aside these four pieces for scoring. Now I have two sets of papers that are both one and a quarter by nine. We'll trim them horizontally at eight and a half and four and a quarter. Pocket that in C. So we're going to cut it again at eight and a half and four and a quarter. And pocket C for all four of those pieces. We did make some really, really tiny little scraps. So these guys and these thin little strips, those I'm not even going to file. That's just scrap. Now I have this long strip. Let's trim this horizontally at nine and four and a half. Pocket the same sized panels. There should be four, all of them in pocket B. And then we have the squarish piece, pocket A. Almost there. Ivory. We're gonna put this in the trimmer so it dips easily left to right. We'll trim at eight and a half. Then rotate and trim at 11 and five and a half. Stack up all four of those card bases and set them aside for scoring. Then we have a narrow strip here again. We're cutting at six and a quarter. And these would-be scraps make really nice anchoring elements for our cards. Put this in pocket C. And that's a scrap. I think I actually used that actually <laughs> that piece. Okay, now we're gonna take the remaining pieces. These are three and a half by twelve. We'll cut at nine and a half and four and three quarters. All of these go in pocket A. A lot of, a lot of things going in A for us. Scrap. All right, now a print. The direction of dip does not matter. We're gonna cut at eleven and three quarters. <laughs> Eight and a half and four and a quarter. Take one four and a quarter and rotate it. We'll trim at eleven and a half. Eight and a half and four and a quarter. We made two squares. These are going to be used when we make our folio. I've also been kind of using a uh, pocket D for my folio fixins. We can do that as well. Um, and then this other rectangle, pocket A. Now take the next four and a quarter by 12. We're gonna cut it horizontally at nine, six, and three. Gather up all four of those little pieces and put them in pocket C. By the way, this is a scrap. And we have one more strip. This is three and a quarter by 12. We'll cut horizontally at nine and a half and four and three quarters. And these two squares that are the same size, pocket B. And a scrap, also another scrap. Let me set those aside. Okay, next we're gonna move on to our cut aparts. Now, if you are a rubber stamper and prefer to just stamp your own cards, that's absolutely fine. You could literally take these pieces of paper, trim them along with me, and then flip them over and you can stamp anything you want on the back side of the paper. Or you could also keep track of what size these panels are and recreate your own as well. Okay, so I'm gonna take this 
this uh, cut apart with the words happy birthday here in the upper left corner and the boots in the on the right here and I'm lining up the edge of my blade with the edge of these um, little registration marks that are included on this print I'm not sure if you can see that but anyway uh, the measurement just to confirm also would be at about 10 inches most of these whole measurements will be on whole numbers then we'll slide to seven and a quarter and finally four let's rotate and you know sometimes too if you if you miss that perfect line you can just get this trimmer can literally shave off a hair which I love okay now rotate this piece horizontally and cut off the smallest piece off the end at 11 inches and then we're gonna go eight and a quarter five and a half and two and three quarters okay these four sentiment panels are placed in pocket a this can be a set aside on your scrap pile the next piece, we'll trim horizontally with this on the right, starting at 11 and a half, nine and three quarters, eight, six and a quarter, and four and a half. All right, this larger piece, pocket A, and we have a bunch of additional smaller pieces. This is all A. And you have this decorative strip. I mean, this would have been a scrap, but Jacqueline just chose to put a little bit of artwork on there just in case. Okay, then the very next strip, we'll just trim horizontally at nine and a half, six and three quarters, and four. All of these pieces. Can I get a yeehaw? All of these. Pocket A. Then we've got this long strip. We're just going to leave this all together. We're going to end up doing some fussy cutting to use the elements on this strip to decorate our cards. Maybe I'll just put that in D for decoration. Okay, so then I'll take the final cut apart and we're going to place this in the trimmer with the um, narrow strips on the right and line up that registration mark with the edge of the blade. And that's going to put you at 11 and, three, 11 and a quarter. And then down to 10 and a half. Slide to eight and four and a quarter. Let's do a rotation. Skinny part on the right, we'll cut at eleven, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. All four of these same size panels go in pocket B. And there will be a, a narrow scrap. You can set that aside. Take the next piece for a very bright future. Should be on your right. We'll cut it ten and a half, nine, six and three quarters, four and a half, and two and a quarter. Okay. So one, two, three, four pieces should be the same size. Pocket B. And then you have two additional sentiments, pocket A. Lots of stuff going in pocket A. That's okay. Have another terrific year. Should be on your right. We'll trim at 10. Seven and a half. Five. And two and a half. One, two, three, four panels that are the same size, pocket C. And then two more, um, or one more sentiment, pocket A. Then we have these long skinny guys. We're going to trim these in half, I'm guessing. That's going to be, yes, six inches. And six inches. All four of these will be placed in pocket C. Next, I'll get out my score pal and get rid of my trimmer, and let's do some scoring. Now I've taken all the pieces that I've set aside for scoring and sorted them out so I can find everything easily by size. And I'm going to take the two largest pieces. These again grow up to become um, folio and the scoring is quite easy. We'll just place one piece in and score at two and six and a half. Then let's rotate this piece so it's horizontal and we'll score at six and six and a half. 
I'm going to repeat that for the second. So again, vertically at two and six and a half, and horizontally at six and six and a half. These two pieces I will set aside in pocket D for when I get to the folio. Then I also have these two smaller pieces of blue. These are currently four and a half by six. We're going to score these horizontally at four and a half and five. Same on the other one. Pocket D. And now I have a set of four ivory and brown five and a half by eight and a half card bases. I'm going to score these at the same time horizontally at four and a quarter and repeat. Both of these will be placed in pocket A. Next you can find four more card bases. These are four and a quarter by eleven. They can also be scored two at a time horizontally at five and a half. These four card bases, pocket A. Next we have these skinny guys. There should be a gold, a print, and two burgundy. Place two at a time horizontally into the score pal and score at five. These will be the bases for card set B. And finally we have um, the, the bases for card set C, which will be a bridge card. So I have special instructions for this. We'll score horizontally at one and a half, and I've got two card bases here, and seven and three quarters. I'm going to take both pieces and flip them bottom to top and score at three and six and a quarter. I'll repeat that for the second pair. So again, horizontally at one and a half and seven and three quarters. Flip and score at three and six and a quarter. All of these go in pocket C. That leaves me with nothing else to score, so now it's time to get making your cards. The first thing I'll have you do is take absolutely everything out of pocket A and sort it into piles by size. Next I'll have you fold each card base in half by burying the bump of the score line. So the bump of the score in this particular piece is on this side and I want to fold that print side out of course. And once complete just burnish that fold with a bone folder. Obviously we're making double the amount of cards that we normally make with eight whole set A card bases. So we'll begin with the um, two printed, we'll make them in batches of four, two printed pieces, a burgundy, and a brown. Let's have that be our first batch of four cards, and that's going to correspond with the images of the cards showing on the bottom of page three in your instructions. Then we just kind of follow along, so distribute a mustard panel and a burgundy panel, and there should be some squares, so a white panel followed by a gold panel here. We'll take a larger blue panel and then a smaller white panel. It's not about the destination. How about a narrow burgundy to kind of add some color to that? I believe I used this little bonus piece and kind of shoved that behind here to make it just add it, give it a little something. We use kick up your heels that should fit right onto the burgundy. And then for more of the square, this ain't our first rodeo and time for a shindig. Now for the inside, let's get together soon, have another terrific year, happy birthday, and then have a very happy birthday. Next, I'm going to stack up these four cards <laughs> so I can continue sorting what's left of my pieces for the remainder of card set A, which is going to be a series of vertical cards. So we have a burgundy, uh, ivory, another ivory and a dark brown. Okay, so let's distribute some panels. I'll put a blue on top of that, a blue here, and a blue here. And then a print, a brown, a brown, and an ivory. We'll add this horizontal piece here, this printed piece there, 
and then a vertical piece here combined with this long skinny guy that I, you can trim the ends off and that will fit right in there as an anchoring strip. So we try to utilize almost everything that we can. Okay, can I get a yeehaw? Should fit beautifully into that spot with a happy birthday for the inside. Then we have a best wishes with for a very bright future. It's a nice congratulations card and we actually combined the little horseshoe charm along with that. And then our good luck, another horseshoe charm with this. And hats off to you with another charm. Also some other embellishments. Let's see. Good luck is paired with wishing you all the best and hats off to you Oh, with congratulations. Okay, so now we have a series of eight cards that can be assembled very, very easily. There isn't a lot of technique involved, but I'm just going to share some tips with you as we assemble just one of the cards. And I think I'm going to do this, Can I Get a Yeehaw? So I can show you how I utilized the, um, the leather-like tags that we've included in your kit. Okay, so one of the first things I did throughout this whole entire card making process was use an embossing texture folder um, throughout, along with my Big Shot. So I took um, all of the panels that had some decent exposure, the little strips, um, whatever I could kind of get my hands on, and I sandwiched that with a, with a paisley patterned embossing folder that I just had in my stash. So I don't know if you happen to have something like that handy. If not, it's not a big deal, but um, I just found that it really added a lot. So I'm just going to go ahead and emboss this blue panel for this particular card. And now I have some beautiful texture here. Another option that you can certainly do is to take um, some earth ink and one of our handy um, ink applicator brushes. And if you just rub this along the edges or on top of the pattern, that will create some highlights, just real soft highlights as well with the pattern that you have here. And it gives it the feeling of like a tooled leather. If that, that is if you wanted to go to this trouble, but it's, and it's really not much trouble, but it adds so much. Okay, so you have that element. And now um, the other thing that I really liked doing with this particular set was rounding the corners of these panels. So I have a corner chopper here. It has a half inch and a quarter inch setting. For this particular card, I'm going to use the quarter inch setting. Or like if you have a really old you know, corner rounding punch that maybe you've been using since the 90s, you can go ahead and grab that. And this will nest onto here beautifully. And then the same with the uh, additional panels. We have this beautiful print. So I'll round those corners. And then the can I get a yeehaw? Yeehaw. I can't even say it. I'm too Midwestern. All right, so another thing you can do too is just add a little ink to the edges. It gives it a nice little grungy look, which I really like. Oh, it's just so soft. It's so perfect. So all of this nest, and you can clearly see there's an open area here. And the way we're going to deal with that is, uh, first of all, I've trimmed a piece of the scrap that was on our little you know, leftover pile. There's some dark brown in there, a, num a number of other colors. And I've trimmed it to 5 eighths by 2 inches. And now I'm going to round these corners. Okay. And, and then I'm going to make sure that the little holes in the tag are completely clear. N center it onto my scrap of brown. And I'll pierce through each end. I've provided you with some brads, so bring a brad through the tag and then also through the scrap paper. It's a great way to use our paper scraps. And then spread those prongs on the back. Now a while back I'd mentioned that we have these strips that we can fussy cut some pieces of artwork. So I'll just I'm not I'm gonna cut with my scissors inside the line that's been provided just to remove the word and the word only howdy from this sheet and then I think it would be nice just to add a little ink to the edge of the word of course it wouldn't be a club scrap card if you didn't add a little book binding glue from needle tip applicator onto something and center that onto our leather tag for the most adorable embellishment ever okay so finally I will nest these panels together And then you can center this onto the panel as well. What a nice addition to this card. 
Don't forget to attach the inner uh, panel. And a word about panels, what you can do to keep your cards a little bit more neutral if you prefer, is to uh, simply leaf the panel inside the card base without it adhering it. And that way, if you wanted to use this for something else, like a thinking of you or even a get well, then you're not committed to the happy birthday. So, I mean, it's just as a way to add more flexibility to the cards. Let's take a look at the remaining cards in set A, which are, you know, this assembly for all of them is very basic. You can follow along um, quite easily with the, with the printed instructions. So here's the card that we made together, and I did not add ink to this raised surface, which you can see here, but it still looks fabulous. And again, even if you didn't raise the surface, not a big deal with that embossing. Okay, so here is back to that first card that we allocated for. Again, the same leather tag ad addition to, to this nested panel. Now the panel and the cut apart are both ivory, so to differentiate some color here, I inked the edges with some earth, and I also embossed and inked the gold colored panel. The same is true for this one. Now the, the kit includes some really fun um, round filigree bronze things. <laughs> and um, so in this case, I took the brown ribbon, folded it in half, and stapled it onto the left edge of this cut apart. And then I added this with some bookbinding glue to cover the staple that's hidden behind. And if you happen to have some Dazzles Jewels stickers, that center is a great spot for a sticker. Here again, I have a silver <laughs> Dazzles right there. It kind of just adds a little life. Here I rounded only the lower left and upper right corners, leaving these square, which I think adds a neat effect. And then I mounted this a little bit closer to this edge versus the other, didn't center it. And then I um, just wrapped the ribbon around the top left corner and taped the ends on the back. Hats off to you. I embossed and inked the ivory panel and did my little treatment with the uh, filigree flower. Then wrap the jute twice around this panel. Once you have the knot, then thread the horseshoe charm onto the knot and tie in a bow. The same thing here, but this time I learned my lesson from the first one because for good luck, I think the horseshoe is supposed to be facing up. So that way I was more conscientious of the direction in which I tied the charm. On this one, I took, um, I had some fun with this ribbon. I just trimmed a small length of it, folded it in half and stapled it to this strip before I attached it. This has been nested and attached with foam adhesive circles. And then the horseshoe charm was just simply glued into place with bookbinding glue. Finally, I had um, some more ribbon here to wrap all the way around this horizontal embossed panel. And once again, tied the charm into place. And I think this was before I realized I needed to, to do it differently to make sure it stayed on. And then you tie those thread tails in a bow. What a fun set of cards. I think you're going to love these. And what's cool about them is that they'll fit perfectly into the folio that we're going to make in a, in a little bit. I've emptied everything from pocket B and sorted the cards in the color bases as shown in the instructions for card set B. These are three and a half by five inch cards, two vertical, two horizontal. And then we can distribute our panels. So we've got a gold panel with the sentiment that says, kick up your heels. That's adorable. And then we're also gonna be using one of our leather tags along with the howdy. And then for this other one, we, have a, we need a gold panel with the sentiment that says take life by the reins and we'll use another leather tag here with um in both cases some uh paper to just from our scrap pile to enhance the the tags just like i showed you before um, we also have for the other cards a printed panel along with a nesting ivory panel and then buckle up and then for the inside of the buckle up we'll have it's going to be a great ride and then we've got to have a great day and it's your day, happy birthday. It'll be like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is show you, because assembly on this is so so much like the cards I showed you in, in set A, I'm gonna show you how I did something really cool with the buckle up card. Once again, starting with our corner chomper, I will round the corners at on the quarter inch setting. If you would like, you can also ink the edges with the earth ink, but for right now, I will just grab this buckle up panel and a cutting mat and craft knife. Very carefully take the knife and slice on the left and right side of this belt loop right here. And probably the more challenging is to slice along this side of the buckle 
hole. And then I'm going to go on the other side too of the buckle. Do you have to do this? Absolutely not. But it's kind of a cool thing that happens next. Okay, now I'm going to take some of this brown ribbon, which just happens to be the exact size of the belt that's printed on this cut apart, which kind of makes it fun. I love it when, you know, happy things like that happen. And I'm threading it through the slit that I initially made in on the loop here on either side and then down underneath this clasp. And then if the ribbon may fray a little bit on your way through and that's all right, just take a fabric scissors or a sharp scissors that you dedicate to fabric use <laughs> and just thread it in and out of those slits that you made with the craft knife. How fun is that? And once you have it threaded through, you can just trim the, the end to be just a little bit wider than the cut apart itself and tape the ends around to the back. Then this can be nested onto the cream panel, the decorative panel, and the card base, and then add it's going to be a great ride to the inside of the card, and you're done. How cool is that? Let's take a look at the remaining cards for this set. So we have the two the buckle up that are assembled the exact same way that I just showed you. And then we have two with kick up your heels and take life by the reins again with a piece of paper in the background. The size of that particular piece is two and a quarter by one. And um, you will have definitely plenty of scrap available to you to um, create and then round those corners to give a nice little perch for your leather leather like tag. OK, let's move on to set C. I have everything out of pocket C and sorted by size. And then let's deal out our card bases. I'm just gonna leave them flat for now and I'll give you some assembly tips. So I'll do one gold, one ivory, one gold, one ivory. Okay, now each of these cards will be dealt a number of things. So we're gonna have a printed panel for the inside of each card base. Then working with opposing colors, we're gonna distribute some little mats um, so two gold mats with every ivory card and two ivory mats with every gold card. Isn't that clever how that works out? Okay, then each one will receive a long skinny strip. This I think is like six and a quarter inches or six inches long. Okay, so we'll have a print with this gold. We'll do the ivory with this. We'll do a burgundy with that one and then the dark brown on this one. And then we have a, a couple of sentiments. So wishing you a wild and wonderful birthday. Thank you kindly. And then these last two sentiments. We'll add a stagecoach. You're the best in the West. And then wouldn't it be nice if we could be like an old pair of boots and the corresponding sentiment says the worse we look, the better we feel. Happy birthday. Now for these cards, I also did a little bit of fussy cutting um, for like the hat. Um, the two pairs of boots, of course, um, this other pair of boots, and the horseshoe. Now, when you're fussy cutting something like this, you know, Beth, who um, does your, packs your orders and stuff, she, you know, admittedly doesn't have a lot of patience for fussy cutting, and nor do I. So, like, in a case like this where you have the spur, <clears throat> yeah, no, that doesn't stay. And just to kind of show you how quickly this can go, it doesn't have to be this incredibly detailed, arduous job. I always tell Beth, no, it was really easy. It only took me like, I don't know, like 10, 15 seconds, and she never believes me. So I just have to prove that this does not take long. To mask any imperfections in your cutting, like let's just say you just aren't a very detailed person, no worries. All you need to do to make these boots look great is just add a little bit of ink with the ink applicator brush. In fact, why don't we just assemble this one while we're here? I'll stack these pieces up and set those aside. So for this particular card, one of the things that I did is I've added some texture to this. Um, but as another note, if you do sub happen to subscribe to the page kit, there's a beautiful stencil included. And you could definitely add some paisley pattern to this if you are in the mood. Okay, so let's get started with our card. First, we need to fold um, on these score lines. So remember the bump of the score goes on the inside of the fold. So what that's going to do is like make two outer 
fold. Okay, then we have two more score lines. Here is a bump, so I need to bury that bump. And I'll do the same on this side, burying that bump. And that's going to form two mountains and two valleys. So it's like a bridge card. So if it's looking like this, flip it over so it looks like this. Okay? Now, the gold panels, with or without your texture added, are used on the outer flaps of the card. Make sure that you, this is a mountain fold so that these panels are on the front of the card. Okay, then we have this decorative panel to go on the inside base. It should fit right into that opening perfectly. If you want, you can add a little ink to the edges of your, your cut apart panel. Doesn't have to take a long time. And we're gonna attach this to the inner portion just kind of near the top edge. So what I'm doing is centering it left to right and matching that distance at the top. Now, we have this sentiment here and we'll nest it onto the long colored strip. Inking edges again is optional. And then before I attach this to anything, I'll take scissors and trim off a piece of this adorable denim ribbon that we found folded in half. I'll grab my mini stapler. This ribbon staples beautifully, by the way. And staple that right on. Nice. Then, when you add adhesive to this, this is really important. You can't go overboard. So, basically, um, I can't go past the width of these panels here in the end. So, I, ne I need to attach it here and here. Notice how the card is positioned when I apply the adhesive. It's basically in a flattened position with one side out and one side um folded like an accordion. So I'll apply my adhesive just on the ends of this long strip. With the card flat, I'll place this on the lower portion, flush with the edge and this other edge here. And then when the card is taken out of the envelope, it stands up nice and tall. And when it's ready for mailing, it collapses flat. So the final touch with the boots would then be to add them so that they kind of are a little bit off the edge. So I'm just gonna study, okay, what are my points of adhesion? Flip this over and I'm gonna apply some bookbinding glue from a needle tip applicator to the parts that are gonna make contact with the card base. And I'll let that dry. That is an adorable bridge card. So here's the one that we made together. It has, the only thing different about it is the addition of the embossed panels. They do add a lot, but the card is still really great without it. So again, don't feel bad if you don't have the embossing folder. I just chose to use it because I had it. And we all have those things in our supplies that we like to make use of when we can. And sometimes we just need to be reminded that they exist. Oh, this is with that sweet horseshoe. And then I added one of those little uh, filigree pieces with a dazzle. This one, I used the boot and the hat. Now, there's a mustache on there, too. And there was no way I was going to fussy cut that. <laughs> and, of course, the embossed uh, panels really add a lot to this as well. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, the making of the folios. Now, these are the items that I have in my final pocket. And I'll just take this gold paper. To make one folio, you need one of each of these pieces. And we'll start out with this piece and uh, we're gonna make some folds here on the score line. So remember the bump of the score goes on the inside of the fold. And you can go ahead and do your preliminary folding here. And you'll see this folio shape kind of starting to form. Okay, so these become side walls. Um, what we need to do is add another one more fold that is at a perfect 45 degree angle coming out near each score line. So to do this, there's a couple of ways you can do it. So I'm going to fold over this side wall. Here's my intersecting score. And I'm just going to fold back on this to bring this, this score line to the edge of my paper. And that what that does is creates this natural 45 degree crease in the paper. Do you see it right there? Now I'm a little off. Just got to make sure you're nice and level with the edge to form. It's going to form like a corner of a box. Now there's another way to do this as well, and it involves um, a grid ruler. 
if I take the 45 degree line on my grid ruler and I line it up with the score line on my paper, that also t tells me exactly where my 45 degree angle is. And that way, I'm just gonna, I can start the score and have guaranteed success of a nice angle as well. So whether you use just your fingertips or the help of the grid ruler, it's entirely up to you. This is definitely a great tr trick to help make sure you have an accurate line. So here, got a nice little 45 degree. Okay, so now I basically have the fixings of a folio starting to happen here. It will all make sense in a minute, but what the important step that I usually kind of need to even remind myself to do correctly is to attach the front flap of the folio at this time. You have two score lines on the blue scored piece of paper. And so go ahead and fold on those scores. If you'd like, now would be a good time also to round the corners furthest from the score line. And I'm going to choose the half inch setting on my corner chomper. Also, if you would like to decorate this with a piece of that saddle stitch print paper, I'll also round two of these corners. It's square, so you don't have to worry about which ones. And I will attach this to my folio cover. This might also be a great time to install a decorative closure. This is completely optional. Um, I did provide you with some hook and loop dots that we will use, but if you want to add something decorative, um, this is a great time to do that. So I'll grab a little mini cork and my grid ruler, and I'll find my zero center here about a half an inch from the edge, and I'll take a paper piercing tool and just kind of make sure I pierce through at the center and again, about half, half an inch from the bottom edge of the blue portion. And then I also have discovered that you can pierce through these filigree elements. So right on through, make sure you sort of round it out a little bit to widen the opening. And I've included eight brads so that you can attach the leather tags. So you, for this step, you'll need to provide a small brad from your stash. I just have a little gold mini brad here and I'm going to shove it right through the filigree thing and then through the folio, the blue portion of the folio. Spread those prongs at the back. You don't have to worry about your prongs showing because ultimately the hook and loop dot will be placed in that spot on the other side. Okay, so with all of that prep done, bring your prepared folio back into the scene. And this is where I have screwed up so many times. So I'm just warning you. Um, I'm also going to miter these corners just a little bit from the edge to the first score line. I'm just going to cut at an angle to make installation just a little bit easier for this. The, the final destination for this will be for that tab, or this flap, to rest right up here with this first score line aligned with the top edge of the longest half of my folio paper. Now that's important. This is the long portion. This is the short portion. If you attach it to the other end, you'll be like me and you'll have to completely tear the thing apart in order to make it work so that when this comes up, this will go down and create our folio. It's the most clever thing ever. Okay, so here we go. I've got my bookbinding glue. I'm going to apply it to just that edge. And... What you can do because it is a wet glue and not a dry is kind of close this and just make sure that that is functioning the way you want it to and you can make any adjustments if needed. Then open the whole works back up. We're going to apply glue into four areas uh, along this angled fold to the top edge and kind of fill that in a little bit and the same thing here. Do not put any glue in the area that needs functionality. So that's this triangular spot here. So on this flap can go and be attached and we'll repeat the same thing around on the other side. So just along the angles and to the outer edges. Okay, so what happens is when this comes up, you'll see then the inside that a pocket is formed. So you can take your cards, set A, and there's two of each color. So you could do a brown, a burgundy, an ivory, and a print. And four of the envelopes we've included. I don't have those handy, but there were four envelopes as well. The envelopes and the cards will all fit perfectly into this folio. And then we just have to seal it up. So I'll show you how to do that. Take one pair of these hook and loop dots. And I'll just remove the backing from the fuzzy side. It doesn't really matter which. 
just remove it from one dot. Okay, so then this sticky goes on top of the brad prongs on this cover. Then remove the backing from the mate and then close it. When you do, a tip for you is just to make sure that everything is level, this top is nice and squared off, and you can press the bottom half onto the front. And you've got a really beautiful folio. And I've given you everything you need, not for just one of these, but for two of these, and we're gonna fill them up with four cards each, four envelopes each. What a wonderful hostess gift. And I love that it crosses over from masculine and feminine sides. So um, I have found a real lack of cards to send to my guy friends, and I think that this uh, wonderful Western set will really fit the bill. Well, y'all enjoy making your Western cards, and if you like this theme, be sure to join me over at the Page Kit tutorial as well. We're going to have a lot of fun over there and learn some new things along the way. Thanks for joining me.